So Dr. Scholz, recently there's been a study that had 13,000 men in it and it was studying hormone therapy and cardiovascular issues. Can you speak to this issue? Do, you know, do men who are on hormone therapy need to be concerned about that? Yeah, this is uh, uh, an important topic. Uh, we're giving hormone treatment to prolong men's lives from uh, serious variants of prostate cancer and it's quite effective in doing that. But uh, the question lingers, is there some smaller risk of making certain individuals um, suffer a higher risk of heart attacks and strokes? And uh, there have been a number of uh, studies looking at this, uh, somewhat conflicting, but it seems that the weight of evidence is that there is a connection between men who go on testosterone deprivation therapy and um, an increased risk of heart attacks and strokes. So what is all that about? There's no uh, specific uh, direct explanation for why that would occur, but I think there's a logical assumption that you, people can make. And that is uh, another effect of low testosterone is weight gain, uh, deterioration of blood sugar control, and, um, and these things which lead to higher blood pressure, to uh, diabetes and things like that, uh, those all promote greater risk of cardiovascular problems. We know that weight gain is a very common side effect of uh, testosterone deprivation. So what appears to be going on is that the people who are not careful with their exercise and their diet on, uh, on androgen deprivation therapy are placed at a somewhat higher risk of cardiovascular disease, which is the same risk that anyone who's overweight or uh, has poorly controlled blood sugar or blood pressure is experiencing as well. Interestingly, there are some studies that show a reduced risk of cardiovascular disease with androgen deprivation. And if you think about it, men who uh, live uh, four years shorter life expectancy compared to women uh, who generally don't have testosterone, uh, and the difference between male mortality and female mortality is cardiovascular uh, mortality. More men die of cardiovascular illness than women do, and therefore don't live as long. So this, uh, this phenomena of having low testosterone uh, leading specifically to earlier cardiovascular disease doesn't seem to be the problem. It's the problem with the men that are uh, not used to living without testosterone and put on weight uh, their blood pressure goes up and blood sugar goes up and then that augments their cardiovascular mortality. It's kind of interesting too, people will ask, well, if, uh, if the, are there other factors that cause uh, a reduced cardiovascular mortality in women who have no testosterone? And it seems likely that that is a result of uh, lower red counts. Um, men run higher red counts from their um, testosterone allows them to uh, have greater cardiovascular reserve. They run marathons faster, but it does create more wear and tear in the cardiovascular system to be pumping thicker, uh, more robust amounts of blood. And apparently that causes the cardiovascular system to wear out a little quicker as well. So it's a fascinating area. It's not that well understood, but the uh, the underlying theme, I, in, in my opinion, is not uh, the, the treatment itself. It's the secondary effects of the treatment where men gain weight, lose control of their blood sugar, and run higher blood pressure. And this does, as we well know, lead to more cardiovascular disease. So the study mentioned that the greatest predisposition was for older men. So is it, how do they manage risk for older men, younger men who may be um, having hormone therapy? So we know whether or not men are on hormone blockade that as age advances, the risk goes up. And so I think the, the impact of hormone therapy on uh, augmented cardiovascular problems is not great. It's like three to 5% or something of that nature. So. It's, it's probably just an issue of people who are already predisposed to cardiovascular problems. They gain weight, they have blood sugar problems, and it just pushes them into a higher risk category and they have somewhat higher in incidence of cardiovascular events. So it's really um, a preventable problem. If uh, men are diligent and are screened, we, we really think that all men over age 45 or 50 should have a uh, coronary calcium score to see how much plaque they have on their coronary arteries. And then people should act accordingly. If there's increased plaque in the coronary arteries, they should uh, be on a diet. They should see a cardiologist regularly to be screened for any obstruction. Strongly consider statin therapy and, and cholesterol-lowering pills, in other words. And uh, all these things are known to modify the risk in a favorable way. So uh, watching people's weight, getting exercise, 
helps everybody universally across the board. But the men that are somewhat older are further along in plaque formation and therefore have a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. And uh, so if you add additional risks like weight gain, increased blood sugar, increased, increased blood pressure, uh, then we're going to uh, see a higher incidence of problems. So a lot of times men are taking hormone therapy for a specific amount of time. So once they're off the hormone therapy, do these sort of uh, cardiovascular issues go away? When people go on hormone blockade, we always counsel them to exercise and watch their diet very carefully. Even after their testosterone recovers, when they stop the hormone treatment, it is still difficult to lose weight. Weight loss is a challenge for everybody. And uh, if people have put on significant weight during the uh, time that they're on the hormone blockade therapy, uh, it's not easy to lose the weight after their testosterone comes back. Perhaps it's a little bit easier, but it's certainly not easy to lose weight at any time. If it's not the hormone therapy itself, but the weight gain that's the problem, it really comes down to can people get their lifestyle back, get back on their exercise program, uh, eat a prudent diet, and these things are well known to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. I've also seen news articles come out where they say that hormone therapy affects memory. Is that true? It seems to be true, um, and it's a reversible effect. The way I understand it is, again, not a direct effect of the hormone therapy on the capacity to memorize. What it does affect is the endurance, the ability to concentrate, um, because as people lose muscle, if they're not exercising, which is a common mistake that people make on hormone therapy, they become weaker. And when people don't have the same physical strength, they don't have the same ability to concentrate and to memorize. The example I give of uh, meeting a, a new client uh, for breakfast, and uh, he tells you the name of his uh, wife and, and children, and you memorize them relatively easily, whereas if you go to a cocktail party after a long day of work and it's eight o'clock at night and you're somewhat tired and someone introduces themselves and gives you the name of their wife and children and you're kind of fuzzy about it and, and you're just not as engaged when you're tired as when you're alert. And, um, and that's the memory problem I believe that people primarily encounter. So it's a loss of uh, endurance and fitness through lack of exercise and loss of muscle, which we know is a side effect of hormone blockade. The benefit of taking hormone therapy is that it can put your cancer in remission. And I think a lot of times that people get intimidated by the concept of hormone therapy because of all these issues. But you've given hormone therapy to probably thousands of men. So how do you balance it out? Right, so we have to select the people that are truly at risk for um, either not being cured or dying of prostate cancer. Uh, and. Uh, this is a, a professional analysis that occurs in terms of, well, how much risk is there of uh, the cancer coming back, say, after radiation? We know we can improve cure rates by adding some hormone therapy. Or if someone has advanced disease, what's the chances that they could die? Because we know that the treatment is quite effective in, forest, in improving cure rates and forestalling death. Uh, so it's, a, uh, it's an education process that I think every patient, when he t sits down with a prostate cancer expert, they can look, okay, what's my percentage improvement in cure rates and, in, and survival? And then what kind of price am I going to pay with uh, the side effect profile? The side effects are quite varied from patient to patient, and so uh, people can embark upon a course of hormone treatment. The side effects are reversible and discover for themselves how they're going to tolerate it and make an ongoing decision as time unfolds as to whether they want to stay on the therapy if they really believe that it's accomplishing what uh, they would hope in terms of um, adequate quality of life and certainly improved cure rates and whatnot. That is a, uh, a decision-making process that is ongoing as people go through hormone blockade. I think one of the things that I've heard you talk about in previous talks and videos is that there's also things to help mitigate the side effects when you're going through them. So estrogen patches for hot flashes, getting a trainer also if it's possible, or maybe you know on YouTube here on this platform, there's lots of free trainers. You can basically find any weight training. You can pick up a book at home and follow a trainer online. Um, are there any other tips that you have to help mitigate the side effects of hormone therapy should someone choose it? Simple estrogen blocking pills like Femara to prevent breast enlargement. Sometimes the emotional swings can be tamped down with a very tiny dose of an antidepressant pill. Skin moisturizers for dry skin. Testosterone causes uh, loss of oil in the skin. Those are just some simple uh, thoughts that uh, do make a difference for people. But the thing we emphasize over and over is fitness, to keep the muscles uh, 
at least reasonably normal size because men can lose 20 to 40 percent of their muscle mass within three to four months if they um, go on testosterone deprivation and they don't do any type of fitness training. PCR has created a weight training protocol, so if you guys would like that, you can find it in the description below. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like more information about prostate cancer and all sorts of education, you can visit our website, pcri.org, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer education videos every week.